Recently, our site has built the Center for Sustainable Future. It's a $4 million, 40 acre net zero building. The entire site runs completely off of solar energy. And what we wanted to do is to do geological surveys in some of these three areas. And the first problem we came up with was robot-to-robot -robot communication. How can we get the robots to communicate with each other using technology they already have? So we got our robots to play follow the leader. The robot in front is programmed to simply navigate around obstacles using infrared. The robot behind it is ignoring all other sensor information and only follows the emitter pulse in front of it. Our second issue was getting the robot to charge without humans having to go out and change the batteries. We came up with an ultrasonic plan. So after about three and a half minutes of the presentation, this ultrasonic transmitter is going to fire. The robots are going to ignore all other sensor information and they're going to go after the ultrasonic. What we're hoping to use that in is we can have a roaming power station out in the field collecting solar energy. And when the robots get low, they can look for the ultrasonic sensors and they can go to the transmitter and charge on their own without human intervention. The next thing that we've added is interchangeable wheels for each robot. We have different wheels designed for different terrains. So if we're sending a robot out into the middle of the woods, we would use the spiked wheel. Out in the marshland, we have a wide-based paddle wheel. Out in the field, we've got sort of a tractor wheel. And on the roads, we kind of have just, just a smooth wheel. All of these parts were 3D printed. Everything was made from scratch. Nothing was from a kit. Uh, we programmed an assembler using a PIC microprocessor. Uh, the reason we chose assembler is because the include files are smaller and it takes less power. So we have more room with our microprocessor to do complex moves and to add in extra things like the ultrasonic and the infrared. Last year when RoboFest ended, I knew this was going to be my last year to be eligible to compete. So I wanted to design something really special. So I came up with the fire assistant. It's important to note that there is no other robots like this and I currently have a patent pending on it. This also was not created from a kit. I designed every aspect of it and even using these tools, put together many of the circuit boards. That being said, you're probably wondering what it does. The fire assistant is a roof ventilation robot. When there's a structure fire in a residential housing situation, the fire department comes out and they like to cut a four by four hole in the roof to let the smoke come out so they can see when they enter the building. Obviously, that is very dangerous for them because the house is on fire and unfortunately they could fall through. So, what this robot does is it will go up onto the roof using a pulley system. It'll pull up on the roof. Once it's on the roof, it'll use its chainsaw to cut a 4x4 four four hole in the roof. It also has 15 different sensors, compass, accelerometer, gyro, rotation, to name a few, to make sure it cuts the proper 4x4 four four hole. So now let me give you three quick demonstrations. So the first one is how I calculated the torque for the motor. Obviously with this robot the size, you can't just pick out a random motor and hope that it works. You have to have a really high torque motor. So to calculate the torque required, I found the standard pitch of a roof, which is 412. Put that into a triangle, use trigonometry to find the angles, and then made size, side C six inches, which is the circumference of my wheel. So I then put in the angles and found how high it would be after one rotation of the wheel, which is 1.9 inches. I then put that into my equation, which spits out the theoretical torque. We double that to get the realistic torque, and divide by four to get the torque required for each motor. Another cool thing about this robot is it will only start up if you have the proper RFID card. So let me go over here. So, as you can see here, it's spitting out a note. It doesn't know the RFID card. But when I place the right RFID card in front of it, it unlocks the robot and prints all the data about the sensors. Another cool thing about this is its flame detection. So, what will happen is while the robot is driving, obviously I can't have the robot driving here, there's no space, but I put it up on a stand. So, while the robot's driving, if it detects a fire, oh no, oh. I was working a second ago. If it detects a fire, it'll stop. The first match wasn't getting the flame sensor. So it also has a robot arm on the top, which is remote controlled, so the firefighters can look into the roof. The whole robot's autonomous, with the exception of that, but that's just so they can peer in 
And honestly, they have to control what they want to see to see if it's safe. Hi, we are the dragons from South Africa. Hi, I'm Dian, and I was responsible for the research of this, of this project. Uh, statistics show that drugs and alcohol have a common side effect, and that is to slow down your reaction time. Slow reactions can cause you to be a danger to the road because you might not think or react fast enough to drive safely. Uh, now, we, if we give our robot to, to law enforcement, they could use it to test and remove you or any other hazardous driver from the road uh, to keep the road safe and they could keep you off the road until the side effects of the drugs or alcohol have worn off. Okay. So what happens is, the program starts when you push down on the touch sensor located on the platform. After that, the robot waits a random amount of time before a light is displayed and a sound is, is uh, sounded. So this is because light travels faster than sound and they can see when uh, the robot is going to hit down. After that, the hammer hits down in a certain amount of time. This happens about six times, every time faster than the previous run. If you pull your hand away before the light is, is lighted up and the sound is beeped, then uh, it does not calculate this in the measurements. Uh, hi, I'm Paul and I program for robot in NXCG 2.0. So the program starts when a numerical value of zero is read into three different variables. Then we have a loop. First thing in a loop is just a random block to make a amount of time surpass so that you can't predict when the hammer will be coming down. Then we make use of first variable to determine the speed of the hammer. After this we have a switch. If you remove the hand before the beep sounded, then all the variables reset to the previous value. If you did not remove your hand before the beep sounded, then there is a time sensor that automatically starts taking your time until you remove your hand from the sensor. This is your reaction time and is stored in variables for later use. We finish the loop by a counter that counts the amount of loops and when it reaches 6 the loop exits and we then use that earlier variables and we add it all together and divide it by 6 to give you your average reaction time. Okay, so the robot is mainly consists of three parts. We've got the platform, the hammer and the NXT brain. The platform is built to be very smooth so it offers little resistance for when you pull your hand out. We've got the, the barriers on the side to prevent you from pulling your hand out to the side to ensure that you pull your hand out backwards. So this will not tamper with results. 